So the Eagles will face the Jets on Sunday to try to get to 6 0 for a second straight season, and even though on paper the Eagles should come away with a fairly easy win, they have to be careful because this game could be a potential trap game for the Birds, and with key guys missing from the lineup and the Jets playing their best football of the young season, the Eagles definitely can't take this game lightly. That being said, this game is also a huge opportunity for the Eagles to get back to playing that dominant brand of football we saw from them last season, so what do they have to do in this game to get back to that level and avoid this potential trap? Well, we're going to talk about all that in this video today, so let's not waste any time and get straight into it. So the Eagles will be trying to remain undefeated as they head to MetLife to take on the Jets this week, in a game that on one hand is a huge opportunity for the Eagles to continue to get better and improve on the things that they need to continue to improve on, but it also could kind of be a trap game because on paper, the Eagles should probably win this game pretty easily. I mean, simply put, they're just the far more talented team than the Jets, and they have the advantage at most positions on the field, including of course the most important position in football, the quarterback position, where Jalen Hurts is clearly clearly the far superior quarterback to Zach Wilson, but that's the thing that could make this matchup a potential trap because the Birds have to make sure that they're not overlooking this Jets team, which does have talent and they have been playing well recently. I mean, the Jets defense is obviously pretty good. They got some really good players in their front seven, notably Quinn and Williams and CJ Mosley. And then on the back end, they got some great players as well, most notably Sauce Gardner. So they'll surely present a bit of a challenge for the Eagles offense, which has been rolling recently. And then on the Jets offense, they got some good weapons, including Garrett Wilson. Wilson and Brees Hall, and then their quarterback Zach Wilson has been playing some decent football over the past couple weeks. I mean, pretty much his entire career, everyone's been really down on him, especially since last year, as he just never really developed like a lot of people thought he might, and he just has never lived up to the hype of being the number two overall pick by New York back in 2021. And then, of course, this year he was just supposed to sit behind Aaron Rodgers, be the backup, and learn, so then he could eventually take back over as the starting quarterback when Aaron Rodgers inevitably retired in a few years. But obviously, with the Achilles injury to Rodgers in week one, Zach Wilson was forced back into the starting role, and to be honest, he was pretty bad in that role for the first three weeks of the season, but again, over the past two weeks, starting against the Chiefs on a Sunday night, he has played a lot better, and the Jets have started to kind of find a rhythm offensively with him at the helm. And last week versus the Broncos, the Jets offense put up over 400 total yards of offense, so yeah, even though Zach Wilson still isn't even really a good quarterback, we know that if he gets comfortable, he can lead the Jets offense to having some success, so the Eagles defense is going to need to do their best to make him uncomfortable in this game. And again, just overall as a team, the Eagles cannot overlook the Jets, especially with the huge game on Sunday night coming up next week against the Miami Dolphins and their historic offense. The Birds are also going to have their Kelly Green jerseys on in the link for that game as well, so that's obviously a huge matchup and a game that a lot of people are getting really, really excited for, so I feel like it'd be kind of easy for the Eagles to sort of look past this Jets game, but they just can't afford to do that. They got to keep that dog mentality that has helped them be so successful under Nick Sirianni, and if they do that, they should come out with a pretty easy win. Their final injury report for this game definitely doesn't help their chances though, as like we talked about in Friday's video, the Eagles are going to have a bunch of key players out for this matchup, starting with star rookie defensive tackle Jalen Carter, who's out of this game with an ankle injury, which he suffered during practice earlier in the week, so that's definitely going to be a big blow for the Eagles defense. Jalen Carter has arguably been their best defensive player this season so far, and of course he leads the team in total sacks with three and a half, and he's just been one of the best overall defensive tackles in the entire NFL in his first five career game, so not having him for this game is definitely going to hurt. Then also, the Eagles will be without Justin Evans, the starting safety, who he's had a pretty injury-riddled start to the season so far. He's obviously been a guy who, throughout his entire career, has dealt with some pretty serious injuries. Now, this is already going to be his second full game where he's out, and he's not going to be able to play in the Eagles' next four games because he was placed on IR with a knee injury, so that definitely isn't good. Then cornerback Darius Slay is also out with a knee injury, which is a big blow to the secondary. And then wide receiver Quez Watkins, he's not going to be able to go for this game with a hamstring injury. Injury. So with these guys all being out, the Eagles are going to need some other players to step up in their absence. I mean, with Jalen Carter not being able to go, guys like Jordan Davis, Fletcher Cox, and Milton Williams all are going to have a chance to contribute more in his absence at the defensive tackle position. I'm not concerned about any one of those guys. Obviously, they're all very good players in their own right, so I think the Eagles should be fine with them having those three guys. Darius Slay being out is definitely a little bit more worrisome, though, because the Eagles secondary, just to be honest, has struggled to begin the year. They have not played well enough, simple as that. So with their top corner being out, that definitely makes this matchup a little bit tougher, especially when you're going to be relying on guys like Josh Job or Eli Ricks, both guys who are unproven. So let's just hope that whoever ends up starting in place of Slay is able to hold up. Then on the other hand, with Quez Watkins being out, I'm actually excited to see what Alameda Zacchaeus is able to do. I mean, obviously Quez missed two games, those being versus the Buccaneers and versus the Commanders in weeks three and four, and Alameda Zacchaeus had to step in and be the wide receiver three for this team, and he actually made some plays. I mean, he definitely did a lot more than Quez has done pretty much this entire season, and I think at this point, a lot of Eagles fans are getting to the point where 
We'd like to see maybe the Eagles go in a different direction from Quez Watkins. The one thing that I feel like Watkins brings that has allowed him to stay out on the field and hold down that wide receiver three spot is his elite speed. He has the ability to stretch a defense out and make it easier for guys like A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, and Dallas Goddard to get open. But in terms of actually catching the football and making plays when his opportunities come around, he just hasn't been able to do that consistently enough. So now with him out, Alameda Zacchaeus is going to get some of those opportunities. And based on what I've seen from him so far this season, I think he can make the most of those. So I'm really excited to see what he's able to do. And who knows, maybe if he plays well enough, he actually could earn the wide receiver three position and take that away from Quez. I don't know though, Nick Sirianni and the Eagles coaching staff seem to still really be high on Quez Watkins. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Could Alameda Zacchaeus realistically take that wide receiver three spot if he plays well enough? But now lastly, moving on with Justin Evans being out and being on IR, they're going to need another one of their safeties to step up in his absence. And I think that the guy they should turn to is the rookie Sidney Brown. Now he is questionable for this game with a hamstring injury, which he's still coming back from. He's obviously missed the last two games while dealing with it, but he said earlier in the week that he's expecting to play, so if he does play, I think there's a good chance that he could get his first start of his entire career this week, and if he does, I'm really, really excited for that. I like Sidney Brown. I think he can turn into a really good player for this team. I think he's got a lot of potential. I like the way he plays. I like his mentality. I like how aggressive he is. I like everything I've heard about him from his teammates, and then when he was actually out on the field for the Eagles during their week three game versus the Buccaneers, he was able to play well at the slot cornerback position. He obviously had that nice pass breakup on Mike Evans in the end zone. So I feel like he's a guy that if he's given opportunities, he's going to make the most of them. And who knows, maybe he comes in here, he plays really well, and he's able to establish himself as this team's starting safety for the rest of the season. Either that, or he's just able to hold it down for these next four weeks until Evans gets back. Or maybe he doesn't play well enough. Obviously, Terrell Edmonds doesn't seem like he's the answer there at safety either. So maybe the Eagles could then go out and make a trade for someone like a Jeremy Chin, who as of Friday, it was actually reported that the Eagles are expected to reach out to the Panthers in attempts to trade for Jeremy Chin ahead of the NFL trade deadline in week eight, which as I've said before on this channel, I think would be a really good move. Jeremy Chin's a really good player. I like his versatility. He's able to play back at safety. He can slide into the slot sometimes. He's able to play closer to the line of scrimmage. And I think he'd be a nice kind of Swiss army knife type player that Sean Desai could get creative with and use him in a bunch of different ways. And I think ultimately he could slide right into that Eagles defense and play really, really well. It just all depends on what the Eagles would have to give up for him. So I guess we'll see if any traction is made on that in the coming days and weeks. But regardless of if that ends up happening or not, this week, the Eagles are going to need someone who's currently on the roster to step up in Evan's absence, so I'm hoping that that's Sidney Brown, but I guess we'll see. But now moving on to the Jets injury report, they're not exactly super healthy either. As cornerback Brandon Eccles is out with a hamstring injury, cornerback Justin Hardy's also out with a hamstring injury, and then starting cornerback DJ Reed is out again this week with a concussion, and then fullback Nick Bauden, defensive end Michael Clemens, cornerback Sauce Gardner, and wide receiver Xavier Gibson are all questionable for this game. So that's obviously a long list that includes a lot of cornerbacks, so the Eagles wide receivers seem to be set up to have a good amount of success in this game. DJ Reed being out definitely hurts for the Jets, and if Sauce Gardner were to miss this game, that would obviously be terrible for them because he's clearly one of the best players on their team. Now, do I think he's going to miss the game? Probably not. I think Sauce will probably be able to likely fight through whatever kind of illness he's got, but the question is, how much will that affect him? I mean, I guess we'll find out assuming he does play, and I'd have to guess that, again, if he does play, he mainly follows AJ Brown, especially with the success the Birds wide receiver won has had over the last three weeks as he's led the NFL in receiving yards during that span, so that'll definitely be a really fun matchup to watch. And then assuming Sauce mainly does follow Brown, that's going to leave Devontae Smith over there against one of the Jets' backup corners for the majority of the game, so it seems like he could have a big day. I mean, all throughout the week, people have been saying that this could be a Devontae Smith game, and he has been quiet over the past few weeks, mainly last week, where he was held to just one catch, so it seems like he's due to come right back this week with a big performance, especially considering the Jets' injuries on the back end, so what do you guys think? What kind of numbers will Skinny Batman put up in this game? Now, Smitty isn't the only guy who could have a big performance against the Jets' offensively, and then defensively, the Eagles should be able to have a lot of success if they do a couple key things. So we're going to talk about that in just a minute. But real quick here, I just want to say, if you are enjoying this video and want to see others like it coming in the future, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Around 80% of the people that watch these videos are not subscribed. If you're one of those people, you've been consistently watching the videos, you're enjoying them, and you love the Philadelphia Eagles, make sure you go fix that right now. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any other Eagles coverage coming throughout the rest of this season. I think that's a win-win for the both of us. Now, with that 
That being said, let's get back into the video. So again, I think there's a very good chance that Devontae Smith has a big game against the Jets, and I'm hoping Jalen Hurts does too. I mean, he's been improving pretty much this entire season. He obviously didn't start the season out the way that we thought he would. He just didn't quite look like himself. I'd say for at least the first three weeks, he didn't look like himself. But then over these past two games, he's looked a lot better. He's been making quicker decisions. He's been reading the defense well. And the Eagles passing offense, just as a result of Hurts playing better, has really gotten on track. So I think it's safe to say that Jalen Hurts has been getting back to that MVP level over these past couple of games. The one thing, though, about Jalen Hurts this year is that he's been turning the ball over at a lot higher rate than he did last season. So that's something he's going to want to avoid in this game. And in this game specifically, I really think the only way that the Jets have a legit chance is if the Eagles make these mistakes and hurt themselves. So Jalen is going to have to take care of the ball here. They can't afford to give the Jets offense short fields. They also just can't afford to give the ball away, especially when they're in scoring position. Speaking of which, the Eagles also just have to be better in the red zone. That's obviously been the offense's main weakness this year. They're currently ranked the 27th red zone offense in the entire NFL, converting at a rate of just over 40%, which is clearly not good enough. Their red zone offense was what held the offense back last week versus the Rams. Obviously, they only scored 23 points in the game, but if their red zone offense was a little bit better, that number probably would have been in the 30s or maybe even the 40s. So again, that's obviously something that they need to get fixed. Jason Kelsey had revealed earlier this week that the Eagles are placing a special emphasis on fixing the red zone offense, but it will be tough to get back on track this week, specifically because the Jets' red zone defense is currently ranked the number three red zone defense in the entire NFL. However, we know how high-powered this Eagles offense can be, and we know the potential that they have, so it's definitely not impossible for them to get back on track in the red zone this week, and I think maybe the key to fixing it could be DeAndre Swift, as when Swift gets a touch on an Eagles red zone drive, they've converted six out of nine times, and DeAndre Swift himself has two of those red zone touchdowns, so it would definitely be beneficial for the Birds to give him more touches down there. The Jets' defense also has just not been good at stopping the run. They're currently ranked the 29th run defense in the entire NFL, allowing over 145 yards rushing per game. So just like it could be a Devontae Smith game, this could also be a DeAndre Swift game too, especially if the Eagles get the lead early. And I think that the Eagles need to give Swift a good amount of touches. We've seen what he's been able to do with a heavy workload that obviously started in week two versus the Vikings, where he went off for a career game. And so far just this season, DeAndre Swift has been one of the best backs in the entire league. So against this Jets defense, which again, has not been great against the run, there's a good chance I think Swift could have a lot of success. And I mean, just overall, I expect the Eagles to have a good day on the offensive side of the ball. They've been improving every single week, and I don't see those improvements being slowed down by this Jets defense, even though they can be tough, as long as the Eagles offense does not hurt themselves by turning the ball over. And then defensively, I'm expecting a good day as well. I mean, even though they got guys out on the defensive side of the ball, they should still be able to get this Jets offense in check, despite them being better over the past couple weeks. I really don't think Zach Wilson can sustain the level of play that he's had over the past two games. I mean, it's not even like he's been great. He's just been decent and good enough to keep the Jets offense moving. But with this Eagles pass rush, I expect them to be able to make him really uncomfortable early and they should be able to get a lot of pressure on Wilson and force him into making some tough decisions. Maybe they force him to turn the ball over a couple times. And I'm confident in predicting that this will be a game where this Eagles defense is going to have a decent amount of sacks. They still haven't had that game yet where they go for five, six, seven sacks. But I think that this game could finally be that game. Again, as long as they're able to make Zach Wilson uncomfortable early, I think Hassan Red is going to have a good game again. He currently has some momentum after coming off a two-sack performance last week versus the Rams where he pretty much ended any chance the Rams had of winning that game. So again, I expect him to keep it going this week against this banged-up Jets offensive line who just placed offensive tackle Elijah Vera Tucker on injured reserve with an Achilles tear this week, unfortunately. And then I think other guys on the defensive line like Jordan Davis, Fletcher Cox, Josh Sweat, Brandon Graham, Milton Williams, and other guys like that, I could see them all making impacts as well. I also think that defensive line should go a long way in stopping the Jets rushing off. Offense. I mean, Brees Hall was great last week against the Broncos, so he's going to want to carry his momentum into this game, but he's going to have a very tough test as the Eagles have the number one run defense in the entire NFL through five weeks, led by Jordan Davis and that defensive line. Now, the only way I could really see the Jets offense having a successful day is if the Eagles defense plays them too conservatively. I mean, we've seen this earlier in the season where the defense plays super soft coverage pretty much the whole game and allows the quarterback to get into a rhythm by completing these short passes the whole game. And then that also negates the effectiveness of the Eagles pass rush. So the Eagles just can't do that in this game. They have to allow their pass rush to get home. They can't allow Zach Wilson to get comfortable. I mean, that's really the only way the Jets offense is going to be able to move the ball consistently is if Zach Wilson gets into a rhythm. So as long as they don't show him too much respect and they press up a decent amount and the pass rush can actually get home, the Eagles defense could have a dominant day. 
And overall, just as long as the Eagles just play their game and have that dog mentality that Nick Sirianni preaches, this should be an easy win. And the Birds should be 6-0 headed into their huge Sunday night matchup with the Dolphins and their historic offense. I personally got the Birds winning this game 34-14, but you can let me know your score predictions down in the comments. And also, again, if you did enjoy this video and want to see others like it coming in the future, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Also, again, if you did enjoy this video, make sure you drop a like on it to show some support. And if you want to watch another video talking about some other Eagles news from earlier in the week and just going over the injury report a little bit more in depth, you can go watch this right here. Now, with all that being said, that's pretty much all I got for this one, guys. So thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.